World War II, various psychologists and sociologists were equally perplexed and disgusted by the evil actions displayed by the Nazis. They could not fathom or justify how a group of people would willingly behave in such a horrific manner. As a result, experiments were set up by psychologists such as Philip Zimbardo and Stanley Milgram in the 60s and 70s to test human nature in reaction to authority. However, these experiments were often very morally wrong and unfortunately negatively affected the psyche of all those that participated in them. Join me today as we break down the Milgram experiment and the ethical implications that came with it. You are now tuned into the Consciously Nikki Network, a matrix of knowledge and enlightenment. I'm your host, Nikki, and if you are returning, welcome back. If you are new, please consider subscribing and liking this video after you finish today's episode. In the last video, we had a look at the Stanford Prison Experiment, and to continue on with that theme, we're going to be looking at the Milgram Experiment and how awful it was as well. Now, very similar to the Stanford Prison Experiment, the Stanley Milgram Experiment took place around the same time in the 60s and 70s. The Stanley Milgram experiment was also a few of them. It wasn't just one experiment, there were multiple of them, but we're really going to focus on the main one today, which I'm going to jump into. As usual, an advertisement was put out into local newspapers, basically saying that if you participated, you would make $4.50 a day. The study was also going to focus on memory. This experiment took place at the Yale Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. Milgram recruited men between the ages of 20 and 50 for this experiment. Off the bat, I'm sure you're able to tell how flawed this experiment is just because of the results that he was getting were literally from just 50% of the population, especially from one gender. Each participant was paired with a confederate. So a confederate in this case means an actor. The participant was always the teacher and the confederate was always the learner. Again, the research actor. They did pretend to draw like who was going to be who, but it was rigged in a way that the participant would always end up being the teacher. There was also an actor pretending to be the actual experimenter, the one that was leading the studies. And he was dressed in a white lab coat, basically enforcing the idea that he has the total authority. Now the learner who was the actor was taken into a room and had these fake electrodes basically put all over his body. The teacher went into the other room, which had all the connectors and buttons to push and enforce an electric shock. These were marked from 15 volts, which was a slight shock, 375 volts, which was a severe shock, and 450 volts, which could result in potential death. Again, I just want to emphasize that the person, the learner, was an actor on the other side. So there was no harm actually done to the learner. The problem was that the participants did not know this. So the teacher, the one that was putting in the shocks, had no idea that on the other side that this was all an act. During the experiment, the participant was asked to read pairs of words to the learner who was in the other room, and that learner would have to say them back to the participant. These were pair words, and the whole idea or test was for memory, so you would have to remember cat, mouse, bat, bar. When the participant would ask which word goes with cat, the learner had to say the proper pairing word. If they didn't say it back properly, then they were asked by the experimenter to push a shock to that learner. What's a little bit even more concerning is that the experimenter would tell the participant every time they get it wrong, you must increase the dosage of the volt. Now, for the purpose of the experiment as well, the learner, again, who was the actor, would purposely give wrong answers so that way the participant would have to well, we have to see if they're going to push the voltage or not. In some instances, the teacher would refuse to push the voltage, saying like they didn't feel good about it, but the experimenter would encourage them, saying, nope, you must. You have to push the voltage on the learner. Yeah, I'm not being in the holler and he can't stand it. What if something happens to him? The experiment requires that you continue teaching. Now on the other room, the actor would then be calling out, screaming, please don't shock me, please don't shock me. <laughs> sometimes even pretended that they died by not responding anymore. But there were four prods that the experiment conductor would say, which was Mr. Williams in this case. Prod number one was, please continue. Prod number two is, the experiment requires you to continue. Prod number three is, 
it is absolutely essential that you continue. And prod number four was you have no other choice but to continue. So you can see how that can psychologically mess with someone when an authority is telling you like you must, you have to. It's kind of like you feel obligated in some of these instances. The video footage as well, which I will link down below and maybe even insert, is very disturbing. You can see the teacher actively refusing to send the volts over, the distress in their face. And then on other cases, some of the men who again were the teacher participants would be asking the experiment leader, whose responsibility is this if this person dies? Like what's gonna happen? In which the experimenter would say, it's my responsibility, it is not yours, don't worry if they die, it's fine. But why did you just stop? You wouldn't let me, I wanted to stop. And that would kind of give the participant justification to do what they did by sending these horrific electric volts over. There's a lot of ethical issues as well with this experiment. The psychological impact of this experiment alone is really disturbing. It's dangerous, especially on those that thought they killed someone in the other room. And then they weren't even told that this was fake at the end of it. Sometimes it would be months before they would reach out, like the people conducting the experiment would reach out saying, hey, you know, you didn't really kill anyone. It was just a, it was just an experiment. So think about living with that for months on end. A little bit more disturbing is that 65% of participants actually gave the highest level shock to the learner that was in the other room. To make matters even worse, every single person that did participate in the experiment administered 300 volts. Jenna Perry, another psychologist, said that most of the cases these people were bullied into doing administering these shocks and in many cases it's well documented on film that these people would be freaking out they'd be panicking and instead of being told the truth they were just told calm down don't panic everything's okay even if that what they didn't know was an actor is dead simply psychology host Saul McLeod also made some concluding evidence and remarks that I thought were really interesting to share so in his research he found that literally most ordinary people are more than willing to take the commands and demands of those that are in authority, even if it's to the extent of harming an innocent human being. And this is simply because of the fact that since we were small, obedience has been ingrained into our minds. Think about when you go to school, right? You're told, sit down, be quiet, don't do anything bad, listen to me. I'm the authority, I'm the authority. We listen to our parents. It's been ingrained into our heads since we were small, which might pose the question or even to play devil's advocate that this could actually be harming society more than doing it good. Why are we so blindly willing to listen to authority without questioning things? And when you do question something, why are you then outcasted as somebody who is sick or is wacky, is a lunatune? Like how could you even question anything? I think that's something that should be instilled into more of the youth is to question everything and to look for answers on your own. Floyd also made a really good point as well saying that that a lot of people are willing to listen and obey authority if they think there's someone who is morally right and legally based, right? So your prime minister, president, the Führer in Germany, right? When people were thinking that that nasty Hitler was doing good for the German population, which is absolutely wrong and disgusting, but that could be the reason why so many of the other Germans listened so blindly to him. It's really scary, especially when you study history and you see how people have actually Acted. When put into situations of harming an innocent individual, it just makes you question like how could this happen? How could someone be able to brainwash and manipulate a mass population into doing something so horrific? That's why we study history to ensure that these events don't happen again. I want to conclude with one last thought from Milgram. He wrote an article after the experiment called The Perils of Obedience and this was in 1974. He stated, the extreme willingness of adults to go to almost any lengths on command of an authority constitutes the chief findings of the study and the fact that most urgently demands an explanation. What are your thoughts about the Stanley Milgram experiment? This is a shorter video, I just kind of wanted to add to the Stanford prison experiment, but I am still very curious about your thoughts and even some discourse in the comments below. That is all for today's video. Please stay conscious always, question everything. I cannot emphasize that enough. Think for yourself and make your own conclusions. I will see you all very soon, take care.